Welcome to Paywin's Note. Today, we have the world famous pianist, Olenia Fuski, and she is also my piano professor from Juilliard School from so many years ago. And I'm actually so very happy to see her again here in New York City. Hello, Miss Fuski. Hello, Pei so Wen. wonderful, so to, wonderful see you. to see you. I cannot believe it. this is like a dream come it's true. <laughs> is this a dream or this is a reality? What is it? Both. Wow. <laughs> it's a dream and reality. Life is a dream, right? But you pronounced my name so well. Miss Fuski. <laughs> Perfect. I'm just so happy to see you. And you, you asked me before, you said, what is the origin of that name? Because Fuski, of course, sounds Italian. We know me as in Si Mi Chiama No Mi Mi, from Mi Mi's ah, Aria, right? Yes. C H I. Uh -huh. And Olenia, you said, is it sounds Russian. Well, there's a wonderful story behind this. Would you like this. to tell me about the story? I'm I will. Very... I will. Okay, please. Well, my father was a, an opera singer, actually, and an engineer. Uh, my mother was a pianist. But my father, being the opera singer, the Italian Che Bella Voce, they have that all five vowels in the name. So he wanted only five vowels in the name. Mm -hmm. So you have O, o A, 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 U, E, Olenia Fuski. O However, e -A -A wow, in those days, suppose I was a boy. If you reverse Olenia, it's Angelo. Oh my goodness, that is so clever. Yes, yeah, so Angelo. If, if I was a boy, I would have been an Angelo Fuski, but I'm an Olenia. Oh, because at that time you don't have an ultrasound. You don't know till the minute the baby is dropped and then you say, oh, it's a boy, oh, it's a girl, right? It's, oh, it's a, that's right. In those days, they, they didn't know before the, the baby was born. Mm -hmm. So he made all they the provisions for the five vowels. One and the, for boy, one for girl. He said, so that's, that's, it's an interesting, fun that's, story. Your daddy is so He was smart. very, very inventive. Yes. So you can look up Antonio Fuschi. He had actually 20, 22 patents. So quite, a, quite an extraordinary man. And I thank him for that. Yes. That mindset because it's so organized and to detail. So to have that, what shall I say, aura, aura, aura of artistic and yet mind considered for detail. Very important for an artist. Isn't it? Right. And he's an opera singer, plus yes, he's an so engineer. Yes, that was one. And my That's mother was a pianist, so could I have a better life? No, to be brought? I was an only child. You're the only child. I'm the only you one. You didn't and tell That was me. wonderful. I loved it. That's great. <laughs> I didn't miss any siblings because at all. Because you got all the attention from mommy and daddy. Well, they were, they were very good. Very strict, too. Oh. Very strict, in a good way, you mm -hmm. know. So I was study. I started the piano at a very what young age? age. What age did you begin to play piano? I remember that he had a recording, and of course he also thought, in case I do not develop <laughs> into a pianist, maybe I could be a singer like he was. So a he singer. taught me a visi d'arte <sighs> from Tosca and si mi chiama no mi and sing and then there's a recording uh, I think I was like three or four and a half oh my and God. my mother saying what is the key signature of F sharp major six sharps F sharp, oh my C sharp, God. G sharp, D sharp, what, H sharp. How old were you then? Three, two or three or four so I was old. you know. Four years old that's amazing exactly. you must be a child prodigy. You well I was a child that was <laughs> in an atmosphere of music and, and, and uh, art. That's so that was amazing. wonderful. That's amazing. And so my mother, it's very interesting because my mother was a pianist and she was three or four months pregnant mm -hmm. with me mm -hmm. when she played the Appassionata, which is something that I played many, many times. Oh my god. So she was, and there's another story yes. con connected to that. You were, we were speaking about in fact, the concert that I was at last night evening. Oh, last night you went to a concert. Yes. Would you tell me about what concert oh, yeah, did you it, go it's to? It's so such a, a wonderful story. And this young man, his name is Christopher Johnson. And uh, he's on a very high level. But every artist should always have another set of ears and a mind mm -hmm. to help them and to guide them. We're never too old to learn. Exactly. If you don't keep learning, 
You don't stand still. That's right. You go backwards. I agree with you. Do you? I'm sure I can tell you because you were. I remember your playing and your wonderful demeanor as, as a, a student at Juilliard. Oh, thank you it was so wonderful, much. Wonderful, wonderful. We'll talk about okay, that. Okay, okay. But let me and, finish and, and your Lemon story. Rose. I have a wonderful story about Lemon Rose Lemon and Rose. Shannon Rose. Please tell me. Oh, I will. Later. But, but let's get back to your story about oh, like, last, last night. night. So what happened last night? He, it's wonderful. Concert, so Christopher Johnson. Mm. He played so wonderfully, and, and I was so proud what of him. What did he play last night? He played the uh, Volstein. What else did he play? So what? And then, works of Chopin, a mazurka, very difficult. You know, a dance on the rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm, right? Yeah, the rhythm. And then he. What else besides Chopin? Etude, and then and then Liszt, Hungarian Rhapsody. It was a wonderful program, and he did. So how did he end up with the Hungarian? Yes, but brought the house down. Everything else. So now, then we had a wonderful dinner afterwards. Yeah. It was to benefit the Bar Harbor Music Festival. Oh God. Well, wonderful organization. That's wonderful. So afterwards, we were all sitting around having a good time, and you said this young man. And this 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 gentleman came over. With white hair, uh -huh. and he said, "Miss Fuski said, you are so wonderful to see you. The last time I saw you, uh -huh. or the, next to the last time, he said, uh -huh. I was sitting opposite you in the cello section of the um, uh, North uh, New Orleans Symphony oh my when God. you played the Prokofiev Third Piano Concerto. Oh my goodness! And I goodness. said, and I had chills. I said, excuse me. He said, you you played the, the Prokofiev Third. In, in New Orleans, I said, "My God!" And next, next standing behind him was my son, Anthony. Anthony, you could do what he I conducted went to school the with of course with that. And he, I said, "My God!" I was three months pregnant with him when I played that. Oh my God! And so we all, everybody was. It was just so extraordinary. And remember, my this mother was three months with me when I with the, with the piece. So isn't that a I marvelous see, story? It is. And then he said, oh. he said it was next to last. He said because later on he said you helped my daughter at the pre-college division. Oh my God! What's the daughter's name? Uh, I, 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 for, I forgot. What what he said, but you would probably. But she was a cellist, also. What's so I will find out. Okay, and let okay. You know. We'll talk to Anthony the, about what, it. What a story! Isn't it amazing? It's just so it's really a small world. So you were three months pregnant when you performed the Prokofiev. Prokofiev third. Actually, Concerto. I was going into the fourth. I, I was wearing a dress that, you know, disguised and, you know, so camouflage. Com com but nobody can tell that you are actually you, They pregnant. couldn't because it was on pier, it's design of the dress. So, which oh. is, which they used to have whether they were pregnant or not. How wonderful. It was wonderful. How wonderful. So he's very lively, probably because of that Prokofi of third. <laughs> Prokofi. <laughs> very lively piece, right? <laughs> Pro oh my God, this is this so is many fun. years ago. So let me tell you, you wanted to ask me about. Yeah. Leonard Rose. Leonard Rose, you say you have a wonderful story. Oh, the wonderful Would you story. Please okay. Share with us. Uh, well, I was sitting with Channing Robbins, and of course, Leonard Rose was still on the faculty, but we were judging a, a competition. And it was a cello competition, co actually, at, at Juilliard. Yeah. And, 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 and this one, uh, a whole group of people, and, and of course, I was privy, meaning I understood what, with whom they studied. Which did not color my disc uh, at all. But, but I said to him afterwards, I said, you know, it's interesting. Why is the level different, you know, from this, these group of students to from the other group that just preceded them, which was very high? They played well, but not at the same artistic level. And he said, don't you know? I said, no, tell me. He said, they never studied with a great teacher. The teacher never studied with a great teacher. So it's him. That's a good one. Isn't that I important? Really like and because he said, I said, and where did you hear that? He said, oh, Leonard Rose told me that story, and so I pass it on to you. This is a wonderful. And story. I was fortunate because I studied with Rosina Levine. Wow. And before that, uh, of course, I studied with Lillian Stuber, which was after my mother, who oh my. studied with wonderful people as well. You were so So lucky. Lillian Stuber uh -huh. studied with Schnabel. And record. She played all the Beethoven sonatas three times. Three times. From memory, I remember her. She memory. taught at USC. USC. Oh my God. Yeah, she taught that. And then, uh, well, I was, I was so fortunate. And she studied with Levine. And of course, I was with Levine and lived with her. It was it was quite. Oh. quite well. I was very fortunate. I think you know the road we 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 travel is determines who we are. That's amazing. And yeah, I'm so proud of what you're doing, bringing all these wonderful stories that you had with Glenn Dictoro and, and the other evening, the cellist at, at, the, at the principal, Lincoln. Carter Bray, yes. they all came to my show. I 
I, I, I called them when they came to Taiwan several years ago, New York Philharmonic. Yes. They, they, they go to Taiwan regularly because Taiwan had the best audience right, and the best course. concert hall and best people. Yes. And the best restaurants. Ding Tai Fung. I would like to take you when you... Well, that sounds wonderful. If you come to Taiwan and I perform, will. I will take you to all the best restaurants. And I When will. are we leaving? <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> He's... No, I know. <laughs> anyway, what... And then remember we went to... England? England, oh course. In 1983? Yes. Oh my God, Esther. Yes. Esterwood Music Esther Festival Wood. in Colchester, a wonderful <laughs> place with a castle. We were there six weeks. Oh my God. Ardeth Alton, my, my wonderful teacher, we had. Uh, my yes. wonderful cello teachers, she her was name wonderful. was Ardeth Alton. I studied with her at Juilliard School from college, pre-college, you know, that's yes. so many years. So, Please. so wonderful. That was six weeks. Six that was weeks. quite extraordinary. Isn't we it? traveled all around. Actually, I had a wonderful time in England. Yes. That's 1982. It's actually, that was my very first trip to travel to England. Yes. It was, and you never know, at the end when I went to college, I ended up with a beautiful English cello. Oh. Year is 1781. And what's the name of it? John Bass. This is so amazing. Oh my goodness. And it, that's even more interesting is, I must be Lillian Fuchs, uh, fix me up with another piano trio. They are all British kids. A beautiful pianist, his name is Robert Markham, and a beautiful violinist, her name is Andrea Sanderson. By the time we auditioned, we got into Mr. Uh, Gallimere's class and since I have an English cello with two English kids he always nicknamed us hey you English trio this that and that <laughs> but at the end we call ourselves a Ryan trio because we perform all over the world Canada Taiwan England England we went did at least five six seven concerts one of the concerts is in Oxford University it's amazing Wonderful. So I have you've had quite a, quite, a, quite a road in musical. I don't know. It's, I'm always with the British people and British culture, and I have a British cello. <laughs> and She's and extraordinary. And that's the first so our, life, our, our journeys are, are quite interesting and varied, right? You never know what's going to happen. No. You never know what's going to happen next. Just be happy, be optimistic. <laughs> yes. So, uh, tell me about a trip. What You play a wonderful concerto. Yes, we played the Sansons at that time, the Sansons uh, G minor. Yes, we did. Well, it's there's so many performances. An artistic life is so yeah. wonderful and so varied, and, and it takes us to many different avenues, like the avenue that you are on now. This is it's Pei Wen Note, right? Yes, Pei Wen's Note. Oh, I love that. I I I, I name it Pei Wen's Note is because I would like to use my own way. I would like to use my own way to record the modern musician, as many as possible. So I'm making a documentary film of my own way. Mm. That's so, wonderful, wonderful. So well, I've done it, I've we, done it for six, seven years. I cannot believe it. So seven years, that's, that's, always, a, that's always a cycle of the beginning. Now that you're, that cycle is, and it's going to be even higher for you. I can see that. Thank you. And you know how many musicians has come to my show? It's, I think it's 40 musicians so far. Wow. 40. I'm 41. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you, were only, you were only 18 years old. That's ago. a go, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm often asked, you know, they say, I've often asked, well, what, what has been your journey? You know, so you asked me when I began, and of course, then I studied with Lillian Stuber at University of Southern California when I was 12. You were only 12. I was 12, and that was very prodigy. fortunate there. You are a child prodigy. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I worked hard too. You had to do both. So then, and then at the age of um, 1920, I came to New York oh. to study with at Levine, Rosina Levine, at the Juilliard School. 1920, you were at Juilliard. I was 20. It was in the Manhattan School yeah, now. At yeah, the time, that's right. right. So I, you knew room 412. <laughs> it, it, it's a wonderful um, room 412. Your memory is of course. so good. Oh, we, it was it was an iconic number. Four, and, but now they've changed the the, uh, the levels of the floor, so now it's actually five twelve. But they have a, they, a you know a plaque saying this was the studio, and there's a wonderful. Uh, it was a cover of Life magazine, which wow. showed her at the piano and Life magazine. I happened to be standing next to her, and and some of the students. It was a wonderful, it was a wonderful era. 
John Browning, Van Cliburn. You know, we, we lived through all of that. Van Cliburn, Van Cliburn actually won because I was in Rio de Janeiro at a competition, and a Russian judge came up and gave me the first application for the uh, um, Tchaikovsky competition because it hadn't taken place. Did you so, go? Did you enter Tchaikovsky? No, competition? I took it back and I showed it to Levine, and she went, Rosina. She went to the. Uh, uh, window in her studio right on Claremont Avenue. She lived at 185. 185 Street. Claremont. Okay. And the, Juliet was right up the street. So she went, she said, Van, Van. And Van what Clyburn, uh -huh. she said he was the one, and he was right. She was right. A tall Hens Texan, uh, right? Good looking. From America. Van who, uh, who better to win the Tchaikovsky? <laughs> Not that ever a, a, a competition would well, be how po old? political. But how old was Van Kleinman at the time oh, I, I, in, in our was, story? He was 19 or 20. He was young. He was, well, he was about three years older than I. He's only so 20 years, 20 years, old. years old. So, Young and so she did. <laughs> and, and Sergei, uh, wasn't Durensky, um, Dubrovsky was the one who gave me the uh, application. So he's, he's there because I went to Brazil. Wow. So that, if you think about it. So here he was. Have you heard of Aldo Pariso at the oh, Of course I know. My yes. cello teacher. Yes, my from, cello from, teacher from Yale, Yale, right? Aldo yeah, Pariso. Of course. Oh, yeah. I love him. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Anyway, back to your story. And so he, uh, about so Ben there, there we were, and, and he, he went there. So I was with her, mm -hmm. and then I was, uh, the New York, New York papers went on strike. I won the Concert Artist Guild, and I was making my debut at Town Hall. Wow. And they went on strike. Oh my God. At the New York papers. And I have telegram from William Schumann saying it may be a blessing in disguise because we were it was a different era that the presidents i mean everyone you know who was president of Juilliard school at that time william who? schumann oh. so he sent me a telegram he said it may be a, it may be a, a blessing in disguise and sure enough the new york times went on strike so oh my God. but they came on back just before i they rescheduled my town hall recital they rescheduled it and i get and i had a Excellent review, but before that review, there was a an interview with the head of Columbia Artists, Frederick P. Chang, mm -hmm. and he was P. on Chang. the on the dais with, with for this television program, just as we are speaking now. And after the program, he said, "I played," and he came to me and he said, "If they give you a good review, we'll take you." So I was signed to Columbia Artists, and there it began. How, and how old were you then? Twenty years old. Twenty. 425, 726, something like that. That's amazing. So there I was, and I toured all over uh, 100 concerts a year, Canada, United States. Oh my God. And it was the best, best experience at, of all is to play the same concert recital mm -hmm. every night because they would, you know, print it, or then you would have two days off and you'd play with the orchestra. Come in, you play with the orchestra, back to the recital. And you would have to be fresh every evening to play that recital. Oh my God. You know, How you can't say, you excuse me, I, I, this <laughs> piano is not quite as good, and I'm a little tired of this. So if it's not as good, you'll understand. You can't do that. So I had a very successful. How do you keep it And fresh? then I was with Hurok for, for, for a season, but then he left Hurok. So that, that sort of ended. And then I was invited to the North Carolina School of the Arts to teach, which I did. And then, um, did you like it? <laughs> yeah, so, so I've had a, a very career in that in that area. So, and then now I'm into um, giving master classes. And when that started, I'm starting a uh, company which is already in progress, Masterclass Twenty One. Wow, what, which, which, what which is Which is uh, going 21. to be live. In fact, I That's a uh, we chat with, with Shanghai. Okay. Uh, lessons and, uh -huh. and they've been very successful okay. and we will do that around the world. They can, uh, what shall I say, request a certain work. We will present it. So it's from my point of view, there are many points of view, you know. Uh -huh. But I have one theory, one, someone's asked me, oh, it's a funny story, you'll love it because of Anthony. Anthony. You know, you, you went yeah, to so Anthony's my yeah, so good friend. It's your, 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 your brother. It's a brother, okay, musical brother, brother, right? Musical brother. So he played one, the viola, right? Yeah, That's the how viola, I remember him as a viola. He, he graduated from Juilliard he with got a, three. He got a degree of violas. He studied viola with the one gentleman from the um, Philharmonic. 
uh, oh, and his and composition he's like, with, with David Diamond, and, and he's conducting with Otto Viola Miller. So he graduated oh in all three. Three degree conductor, composition, Position and viola. And viola. So he must be a child prodigy. He started with the violin too. with Louise Barron, but he was a big guy, and I said, he's, he's very tall. Viola's better. <laughs> all right? Oh, you said why? Right? So he ended up with Viola. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we were, we were, he was like about 12 or 13. And you know, I was, people were always asking me questions. Well, how do you do this? And I said, yeah, that person is gifted, is talented, is talented. And we're driving back up to Riverdale, up the West Side Highway after the day at, at Juilliard. And he said, I have a question. I said, you're very quiet. <laughs> uh, he said, I, I have a question. I said, what is it? He said, I heard you say this person was talented or gifted. What do you mean by that? Yeah. I said, well, I tell you, to me, and I said it's, I said one step at a time to him, but the answer is threefold. I said, <laughs> to me, energy is an, you must have energy. The right energy. You must have energy. And he said, oh, energy. I said, and, <laughs> I said, you must be, have organization. In order, he said, he said, oh, I said, organization? in order to organize that energy. Wow. I said, and then you have to have artistry. Artistry. It came to me as I was speaking, actually. I said, artistry, he said, I said, because you have to communicate the organization of that energy. Wow. You have to have all three. How many people do you know that who have three. energy, but they're not organized? <laughs> or they communicate, but they, do, they, they don't have the energy. That's, they communicate, that, but still. You have to have all three. And then, of course, you need to be lucky. <laughs> Find a patron. <laughs> lucky, also. That's, that was my, what, what, what I've had to, That's true. so far, my, my, my advice. That is so true. You have to have energy, and you have to be organized, and, and then you organize, have to be really charming, you know? And well, it, no, artistry, it's, charming is one thing, but artistry. you have to communicate it. I, I, this one student I, who was so gifted from, from Shanghai, uh -huh. and I said to her, she said, the day, she said, you know, I'm playing Wiedmung, which is a wonderful work, uh, uh, Liszt Schumann. Yum ba ba bim ba 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 bi, yum ba 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 ya bi. Such a great thing, and it develops and it has fury, and then it dies down. Well, you know Schumann loved his Clara, yeah. right? The so only love. I said to her, to, it's a, to a love dialogue. She said, "Pardon me." It's a love conversation. With oh yes, his it's a com wife. conversation. Of course, he had his problems, right? Schumann as we know. And Clara, yes, but anyway, ahead. so so I said to her, she said. I said, do you, I always ask at, at the end, end of a piece, I said, do you have any questions? And she always says, not yet. So this, this wonderful young lady, um, and she's 16, has been uh, accepted to the uh, premier, one of the premier uh, conservatories, Manhattan School of Music, which was, the, as we said, the old Juilliard. And uh, she was playing this Widmung, uh, which is a transcription by Liszt. Uh, of a Schumann work, and she it was yum ba ba bim ba 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 bi yum ba 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 yum bi ba ba. So she said, it comes so many times. How can I vary that no, people are not bored? And I said, well, I said first of all, when you walk out on the stage for the first time, or when you are transitioning from one work to another. Your audience, whether they know the music or the score at all, should have the feeling they know who you are when you walk out. They know who you are. They know, uh, and when you start, the feeling should be within your body as you p start either with yum ba bum, beam ba bum, beam ba bum, ba, or bum, ya ba ba, B flat minor prelude and fugue, five voice fugue, ba ba ba. They should feel it already from the opening. Now, here's this Wiedmung. And it's a love song, in a way, to his, his Clara. They should feel, even though there's incredible sections where it's fury and, and pathos, you know, and dedication, which is what it is, said they should have that feeling when you begin. They know what it is. It's like you're presenting a dinner. You have the main course. You know what ingredients are in it when you present it. And she, she said, try it again. It was a magnificent performance. I should send it to you to be a part of this. It was extraordinary. I said, brava. I have nothing to say. She got it. Just she like got it. She's got, she's got that kind of a brain and oh, soul. I was so proud you of her. She just mentioned one thing and then she got it. It was it. Away. Child prodigy. But, I'm so, but thank God. Uh -huh. Thank God she asked the questions. So always ask. The right questions. 
Artie Alton used to tell me, Pei Wen, you ask so many questions. <laughs> Who said that? Artie Alton, my teacher. I ask so Aww. many questions you won't even believe. I have. Oh, keep asking. Doesn't matter. Say, say. Well, I said I asked all these questions because I know you have all the answers. You should have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but then again. I'm a little bit older than you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite a bit. My, my first reaction is that, oh my God, maybe I asked too many. I should no, no. shut up. No, that, that's just that you asked so many questions. I don't know, is it good or bad or doesn't bother her at all? See, she says, well, I've lived lo so long. I've come almost into contact with every personality that has ever lived. <laughs> it, it, you know, I said to one of my students at one point, I said to me, uh, how is it that you, you understand people? I said, but you know, I don't know why. I think I have that, my father's instinct about people. He was great in that. And I, and I said, I can see when they, when they walk into the room, before they play, I said, I can say to myself, oh, 438 number X, that's, that's that personality, or this one. And I said, I can, <laughs> I, 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 it's true. And after they play, they said, well, how do you approach each student? I said, I'll tell you. I've been asked. How do you approach each student? How do you teach them? What is your formula? And I said, well, I, I don't know if it's a formula, but after they've played, and I've spent a few moments with them, I can tell you where they would be at the most successful point in their life. Let's say it's 60. That's amazing. 70 or 80, whatever. I can see the, their, the potential, the top potential. And I take that and I walk it back to where I'm sitting right now in the present that's amazing. and that's how I teach them and that's to me the most successful aspect of being a professor is to have all your students sound different in Esterwood we went back but we not into Esther. England we went to Spain and I was part of a piano festival and I had incredible Un Yang Yu I don't know if you remember her pianist and uh, just some wonderful ones a pianist playing and they all play, and afterwards, this Spanish, wonderful teacher and pianist, he actually played with the New York Philharmonic, came to me, and he said, I have to congratulate you. I said, oh, they were, they are, they're wonderful. They're, they deserve the congratulations. He said, no, that's not why. He said, every one of them sounded different and wonderful and independent. He said, the other classes, the other teachers, we could say, oh yeah, that's so-and-so's pupil. Oh, that's so-and-so's pupil. Right? He said, we couldn't, every one of them sounded different. To me, that's the best accolade I could receive. That's, that's success for a teacher. Each one independent, their own persona. This is so amazing. And I'm just wondering if I could ask you a question. Who's your favorite composer? The one I'm playing at the time. Wow. Oh, so. It's like you're asking me, they always ask me, where do you love living? Do you like New York? I say, where I'm standing is my favorite place. What I'm playing at the time, what I'm studying is the favorite. It must be. Otherwise, it won't be successful. Wow, this is amazing. Such a pleasure. And, wait, wait, wait. So what advice do you have for the young musician out there who wants to become the great I have piano. three words. Never give up. Never give up. Wow, this is amazing. Miss Fuski, there were so many kids at Juilliard School. And how did you remember them all? I'm I, just so I, curious. I did. And I remember you so well. I remember you had, even though you were young, I think you were what, 14 or 15 when you first 15, arrived? 15, right? 15. And you had this wonderful demeanor, as if you knew, you were centered, you knew what you had to do. You were serious, and yet there was a little humor at the edges. And you sat next to Bjorn Sung, you were co-principals co in the first On the first chair. end. So wonderful. Oh, you remember I remember that? you, I remember exactly, I can see you right now. It was one of, when, when Mr. Of, Nirenberg is our conductor. I love him. Oh, yeah. so oh yes, wonderful. he was wonderful. Oh where my is God. he now? <laughs> Mr. Well, Roger he's, Nirenberg. He's in the, that area where conductors go when they start to think more about life. Is he still in New York City now? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not let's, sure. let's look but, it up. But I do remember another part of you was on the trip when we flew to Colchester, which we were to there for England. six weeks. 
You remember we spoke about that? Yes. And, but it was what I remember incredibly, and it, we were flying on the first flights of Virgin Atlantic, and they we had the whole plane. Because you remember how many people? I remember. We had a whole orchestra, 26 faculty. And we had so many cellos. And, the cello, and that's the story. Cellos had their so seats. So we had to pay. What happened? I remember that. We had to pay for each cello. <laughs> some of these cellos and some of these violins. The violins were OK. They could be stored. But the cellos. But the cellos. So we had a whole <laughs> section of the plane. I remember. With, in the back, all these incredible, expensive cellos with the seat belts around them. I remember that. And, and I remember turning around and I said to myself, oh my, my God, God, this is a cartoon for the New Yorker. And a, one of those drawings showing the back of the plane with all these cellos, each one, one was a brown, tall top, nice one, was a, one was a little, nice one was a little shorter, one. black, one was a kind of a tan, <laughs> and they all had personalities with these seat belts <laughs> around them. And I said, the only thing missing was a little piece of their arm up like a bow holding a martini that was all that was missing for a new yorker cartoon isn't that wonderful <laughs> Miss what, what, what a great trip that was miss fusky you have such a wild imagination <laughs> so wild uh, what else do you need in order to be an artist and a teacher you need imagination broad wild let it live but I remember all the cellos are sitting with the cellos, but then all the cellists were sitting with the cellists because the cello personality are just so fun and they're so harmony because we, what we play in the orchestra is that mm -ba, mm -ba, the harmony in the bass. So I actually think cello personality, they, we, we are so easy going, really. And also double bass player. What a player. wonderful time, what we did there. And how many weeks did we spend there? Six. Only six. I feel like we were there forever, you know. When you're in some place that you love, you are there forever. That is a beautiful memory that we took with Miss Fusky, my first trip to England and with my cello and that was so beautiful that story. It, it stayed in my heart forever and Miss Fusky is just so talented and yet she's very funny and you need a sense of humor if you're in the arts. <laughs> you must have it. Oh, Most this is such a pleasure to be with you today. It's amazing. Thank you for thank having you, me. Thank you for sharing your story with us. And I hope to see you in the near future. I hope so too. Mm -hmm. Maybe in Taipei. I'll, sh I'll show you around after the concerts. And I will take you to the best restaurants, such as like a Ding I have Tai no Fu. doubt. Please come. I'll show you around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you.